Writers Guild of America voted to authorize a strike if a new contract deal cannot be reached with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. The Guild wants to rework writer compensation. They have also proposed a new regulation that would allow artificial intelligence in script writing so long as it doesn't negatively impact compensation and credits. AI-generated written works are impacting a lot of fields right now, but it's especially acute in schools. Across the country, colleges and universities are fighting back at students who misuse the artificial intelligence program ChatGPT. They're finding the battle is tricky. NBC's Gotti Schwartz has more. At the University of Southern California, a year for the history books as artificial intelligence has arrived on campus. Pretty much everywhere you look, uh, like in the classrooms, outside of the classrooms. And in Dr. Karen North's classroom, a new kind of test. Write a, just a paragraph. Dr. North asking some students to write an essay themselves and some to write an essay using AI like ChatGPT. But she's not testing her students, she's testing another AI system built to see if AI is being used to cheat. You see, across the country, a lot of schools have been using software like Turnitin to help detect plagiarizing and now the use of AI. So our informal experiment will see if the software can detect when our students use artificial intelligence and when they don't. So many of them are 100% AI. Did Turnitin catch all of the AI generated responses? We were sort of shocked. It did, it did catch a lot. But some did slip through. There's one kid who wrote who had a 100% AI generated document and it flagged him as 3% AI. And this essay also got a flag. First of all, know your audience because you should be able to speak to the age, demographic, and interests of your audience. Except that was an original essay written without ChatGPT. Are you offended? Yes. <laughs> I'm super offended that it thinks I'm an AI. My original work came back 100% AI. Does it feel like all of a sudden, if Turnitin says this is AI, you're, you're guilty till proven innocent? Right. It's 100% yeah. it's guilty till proven innocent, and we have no um, you know, evidence to back ourselves up. We just have to, we're at the mercy of our professors and our TAs. What scares you the most, AI or AI detectors? The AI detectors, because I worry about the one or two kids <laughs> in each class who might face catastrophic disciplinary action when they're falsely accused. When you apply to college, there's a box that you check, have you ever been subject to discipline? And you have to check yes, and you have to explain what yeah, the discipline was. it's like an academic was. felon. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. And when the professor herself decided to write an essay and see what would happen. And this down here, this says 43% AI. So it says that it's 12% overlap with other papers that have been turned in somewhere. And then it also says that I used AI to generate almost half of it. So it thinks that this came from AI. AI and that all of that from, came from all AI. All that came from, and mm -hmm. yet all of that came from Me. your fingers. Yeah, I typed it and then I submitted it. Turnitin says a flag should lead to a conversation, not punishment. How much of this is also on teachers to double check what the detection software might be saying. Ultimately, at Turnitin, we've always believed that making decisions on academic integrity is something that the teacher has the final say in. But our hope is that the tool is not really used in a punitive way. This technology is incredibly new. Where it fits into society, where it fits into creating original works, that's an ongoing conversation. Do you think teaching is going to change forever? A hundred percent. We've seen it with the calculator. We've seen it with Google search. The problem with this one is that it actually generates the product for the kid and therefore it doesn't teach the student how to think. As for next semester, Dr. North might go back to the old school. So you're thinking going all the way back sure to, I'm going to pen and paper. Yep. You're going to take a test. I'm going to hand out the test. Everybody take out a pen. Close your computers. That was Gotti Schwartz reporting for NBC News Now. Students or anyone really who does start going old school and writing by hand may notice some surprising benefits. Oxford Learning says it can reduce stress and boost creativity and helps keep your brain sharp. They also say that there's an increase in the ability to remember and it helps boost comprehension. The science for this, as with many things involving the brain, isn't exactly clear, but it appears that more motor neurons are involved in handwriting than are used in typing. They also say it can help boost your mood. And as a side note, they say writing about gratitude, especially before bed, can help improve sleep. Have you noticed, though, when you like take notes or mm -hmm. write something by hand that it feels kind of weird? Now? Yes, because we don't do where everything is. Right. Yes, I agree. Right. 
or your hand gets tired. That's why it's sad that we call it going old school, <laughs> that we're going to write something out all of a sudden. Well, technology.